Hey, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Wine Wednesday. Happy Wine Wednesday. I am your host, J. Tom Gunter, owner of Grapes and Sam Publishing. Hey, what up, everybody? We're back for another one. I hope you guys are enjoying your Wednesday. Happy Wine Wednesday. Uh, and I can't wait to get into this wine with you. Um, before I do, though, I want to let you guys know I had a wonderful time at Cab Franc Apalooza on Sunday and it was my first time getting out of the house since the baby's been born as far as like doing something uh, for me had an amazing time it was in Livermore California hosted by Stephen Kent um, Stephen Kent Winery after the whole thing ended we all had a chance to kind of connect and have some wine and talk um, I was able to get this bottle so that I could review it and because this is one of the bottles that was um premiered or uh yeah premiered uh, at the event so today we're talking about the Locote um Locot, um Cabernet, Cabernet Franc this is the 2021 this is from the Remore Valley and this is Stephen Kent so if you guys can see that I hope you guys that's such a beautiful label isn't it very uh very uh prestigious very like you know French <laughs> um but anyway uh, let's get into the wine. I really enjoyed all his wines, and so this one I look, I, I tasted, I loved it. I wanted to review it on on camera, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's get right into it on the nose. So I get blackberries. I get a little bit of like a hickory spice going on here. I'm also getting blueberry and a little bit of blueberries and a little bit of like briar patch. Wet soil here, um, along with like a little bit of like a sun kiss like um, tree bark. Which is crazy, but that's what's just what I'm getting on the nose. I'm also getting like coffee grounds here too. That's like a secondary. There's something that I'm missing that I'm trying to put my finger on. A little bit of like burnt brown sugar here too. As a secondary. And cassis. That's what I'm getting. A little bit of cassis going on here. Let's go ahead and taste and see if everything's translating to the palate. This is a delicious bottle of wine. Um, this is a pop and pour. I literally just opened it up. I probably should have opened it up and gave it some time. Um, but I don't need to. It's, it's delicious. Right out the bottle, it's delicious. Um, I'll talk structure first. Acid is medium, kind of right below medium, almost medium minus, but medium. Um, tannin is medium, uh, getting on the higher end of medium, but not medium plus. It's more on the high end of medium, though. Finish is long. I would say this is more on the medium body, approaching medium plus body, um, weight on the palate. Um, doesn't really dip on the palate, stays pretty consistent throughout it. Uh, very fun one. I think this wine you can drink like, you know, regular room temperature, but also like on a hot day, this wouldn't be bad with a little bit of a chill on it either. Not over the top though, you don't want to be too chill, but like maybe a little bit colder than room temperature. I think this would be a nice refreshing wine. I kind of dig it quite a bit because of the flavor profile. So let's get into it. On the palate, um, that blackberry is the first thing. Um, I'm getting up front. Uh, it does as a car. It's like the blackberry is driving the car, and as it's driving down the pallet, other things are jumping into the uh, passenger seat in the back seat. So as it's doing that, um, I'm getting a little bit of like a, a a raspberry thing jumping in. I'm getting a little bit of a, a a plum and a blueberry thing jumping in the third quarter, and then as it gets into that third quarter, then that gets a little bit more like kind of earthy. Uh, you're getting some of that um, kind of coffee ground thing goes into the finish a little bit of like kind of a cocoa nib thing too chocolate um i'm digging this wine quite a bit there's also like a little bit of a secondary green note here that i don't think you would catch unless you're really looking for it or you're really tasting because cat frog's known to have a little bit of a green note there um and it's here but it's like secondary it's like low but low secondary and i like it because it gives it a little bit more complexity i'm digging this wine quite a bit this is so well balanced it also has like this like red cranberry thing going on here too that I'm picking up now um, in the same vehicle that I was talking about earlier. Wonderful wine. Highly recommend this wine. 
Um, if I'm scoring it, stay tuned. Wine Wednesday will be right back. Check out my online store, fruitandglassgear.etsy.com, where all the gear is wine inspired. Um, I would think you'll love it. It's comfortable and just check it out. Cheers, guys. Now back to the show. Uh, I gotta go 90 plus. Not, eh. Yeah, I think 90 plus. Um, you know, I'm gonna pop it up to 91. This is a 91 uh, bottle of wine, in my opinion. Um, and um, if you get a chance to go to Livermore, first of all, go visit Livermore. Livermore is an amazing place uh, for wine people, wine lovers. Um, and the people out there still have their hand in the soil and are still enjoying this whole process of making wine. Um, go check them out. Um, go check out Stephen Kent uh, Winery. It's one of the best ones out there. And um, also, I have been um, dabbling with ghostwriting for quite a bit. So if you're a person that has a story and wants to write a bio autobiography or anything like that, or just wants to write anything, but they're looking for a uh, ghostwriter, please hit me up. Um, I'm going to get more into my, I'm getting, not want to, I am getting more into my editing bag and also my ghostwriting bag. Also, if you have a story you want to tell, um, hit me up. You know, of course, I have a publishing company. Um, I would love to tell your story. So hit me up and I would love to like, go over and talk numbers with you. I'm very reasonably priced. And again, I'm all about the artist because I'm a writer myself. So um, yeah, I will be very I will be very fair as far as uh, figuring out whether we can work together or not. Um, other than that, question of the day. All right, so this is the thing. Uh, again, I'm working on this project and I'm curious to know. Um, and uh, actually, you know what? This is for men and women because I'm curious to know what women like to... Like to um, what cocktails women like to. Um, can you please list me your top two uh, cocktails that you like to sip on? Um, the reason I'm saying this is because I'm thinking about like, you know, the earlier days when I'm in my early 20s and, um, you know, you're, in t you're entertaining company, you know. For me, it was opposite success, sex, but whatever floats your boat, like whatever you're entertaining, you have some company over and you want to make, uh, you want to like have a cocktail that, you know is going to first impress them but also like um impress them but also like you know something that you have in the back of your mind that's easy to just pull out and so uh my question of the day is what is the top two cocktails that you think everybody should know how to make guys i hope you guys have a wonderful week i hope this is the perfect episode to get you over the hump day for the rest of the week and until next time guys cheers